Report claims Yemen's Houthis have a hypersonic missile, possibly raising stakes in Red Sea crisis. Yemen's Houthi rebels claim to possess a new hypersonic missile, potentially escalating attacks on shipping in the Red Sea amid Israel's conflict with Hamas. While the claim lacks evidence, it aligns with Houthi threats to counter U.S. and allied forces. Hypersonic missiles, faster than Mach 5, challenge existing defense systems due to speed and maneuverability. Iran, the Houthi supporter, also claims to possess such missiles. The origin of these weapons raises concerns about international arms embargoes. Recent Houthi attacks on ships demonstrate their capability and potential impact on regional conflicts. However, questions remain about the effectiveness and maneuverability of such missiles in real-world scenarios. Israel says it will flood Gaza with aid as pressure mounts to do more. Israel plans to increase humanitarian aid to Gaza amid growing concerns about hunger in the region, with the aim to alleviate the risk of famine for its 2.3 million residents. Despite assertions from aid agencies about insufficient aid reaching Gaza, Israel states it imposes no limits on aid entry and blames delays on agency failures. The military spokesperson, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, stated efforts to flood Gaza with aid via various entry points, including land, air, and sea routes. However, challenges persist in fair and efficient distribution within Gaza. Recent incidents highlight the risks involved in aid delivery, including a deadly confrontation during an aid convoy. Most aid enters Gaza through the Karim Shalom crossing, but efforts are underway to open additional entry points. The United States is also involved, conducting emergency air drops and planning maritime deliveries to address the crisis. U.S. expected to impose new sanctions against occupied West Bank outposts, Axios reports. The Biden administration plans to impose new sanctions on two illegal outposts in the occupied West Bank, as well as on three Israeli settlers involved in attacks against Palestinians. The sanctions aim to target entities providing support for such attacks. This move signals the U.S.'s disapproval of Israeli settlement policies and its commitment to international law. The U.S. State Department has not yet commented on this report. Israeli settlements in the West Bank have been a contentious issue, with Palestinians seeking the territory for a future state. The recent Gaza conflict has seen increased violence in the West Bank, with a significant number of casualties reported. BP and UAE's $2 billion Israel gas deal suspended as war rages. BP PLC and the United Arab Emirates state oil firm, Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, ADNOC, have suspended a $2 billion bid to acquire a major stake in Israel's new med energy due to uncertainty caused by the war in Gaza. Despite the pause, new med stated that BP and ADNOC have reiterated their interest in the deal. The announcement comes after Hamas's attack on Israel strained relations with Arab states and affected negotiations. The deal, announced in March last year, aimed to strengthen financial ties between the UAE and Israel following the normalization of diplomatic relations. However, the conflict in Gaza disrupted negotiations. Israel's military operations have drawn criticism from the Arab world, including the UAE, which has urged Israel to cease fighting and allow more aid into Gaza. The new Med deal would have extended BP's presence in the eastern Mediterranean and marked Adnok's entry into the region. Despite the setback, the two companies are collaborating on other projects, including a joint venture in Egypt focusing on natural gas. ADNOC is also advancing its plans to establish a global natural gas business and aims to become self-sufficient in gas production by the end of the decade. NewMed owns stakes in Israel's Leviathan Gas Field and Cyprus's Aphrodite Field, contributing to the region's energy sector. Italy rejects extradition to Israel of Palestinian over rights fears. An Italian appeals court rejected Israel's request to extradite a suspected Palestinian militant named Ainan Kamal Afif Yesh, citing concerns over potential mistreatment in Israeli prisons. Yesh, along with two other Palestinians, was arrested in central Italy under suspicion of planning attacks in an unspecified country. The court referenced reports by Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch on prison conditions for Palestinians in Israel. While Yesh will remain in Italian custody due to ongoing investigations, the court declined Israel's extradition request. Israel accused Yesh of financing an armed group called the Tolkarem Brigade, linked to the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades, considered a terrorist organization by Israel, the European Union, and the United States. The other two arrested Palestinians were not subject to extradition requests from Israel.
Pro-Palestinian protesters shut down security line at San Francisco International Airport. Pro-Palestinian protesters staged a demonstration at San Francisco International Airport, demanding a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas conflict. Over two dozen protesters blocked access to the airport's G gates, displaying a Palestinian flag with permanent ceasefire written on it. The demonstration, which reportedly involved around 200 protesters, also affected the A gates and areas outside the airport. Despite the protest, airport operations continued, with passengers being rerouted around the activity. Protesters expressed frustration at the lack of response from authorities despite their efforts, emphasizing the urgent need for a ceasefire. China, Russia, and Iran put on show of force with Mideast naval drills. Warships from China, Russia, and Iran conducted live-fire exercises in the Gulf of Oman this week, involving over 20 ships from the three nations. The drills aim to strengthen maritime cooperation and maintain regional peace and stability, according to statements from the defense ministries of China, Iran, and Russia. China sent a guided missile destroyer and frigate, Russia dispatched the cruiser Variag, and Iran contributed frigates and fast attack boats. The exercises, in their sixth iteration since 2018, occurred amid heightened tensions in the region due to the Israel-Hamas conflict and ongoing attacks by Iran-backed Houthi rebels in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden. Iranian Rear Admiral Amrallah Nozari highlighted the strategic importance of the exercise area, covering key maritime routes crucial for global energy in trade traffic. The Iranian Navy introduced new vessels armed with advanced domestically developed weaponry for the exercises. Iran's support for Hamas and the Houthis, along with the deepening ties between China and Russia, especially following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022, has raised concerns in the West. Johnson signals shift on Ukraine to GOP senators. Speaker Mike Johnson, Republican Louisiana, informed Republican senators at the annual Senate Republican retreat that the House would send legislation to aid Ukraine, but with significant differences compared to the $95 billion foreign aid package passed by the Senate. Johnson suggested the possibility of a loan or lend-lease program for Ukraine to avoid burdening U.S. taxpayers, along with legislation similar to the Repo for Ukrainians Act, which would seize Russian assets to support a Ukraine support fund. However, Johnson did not mention including tough border security reforms in the aid package, as it might face opposition from Senate Democrats. Despite pressure from Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, Republican Kentucky, to consider the Senate passed package, Johnson emphasized the House's intention to craft its own version. Some Republican senators expressed optimism about the House sending an aid package, particularly highlighting the potential for a lend lease program and seizing Russian assets to aid Ukraine. Former President Trump also endorsed the idea of providing aid to Ukraine as a loan. However, some senators, including Senator Susan Collins, Republican Maine, expressed concern about the loan idea, preferring the Senate's approach of providing direct aid. McConnell urged Johnson to allow a vote on the Senate-passed bill, emphasizing the urgency of providing aid to Ukraine. Johnson stressed the importance of passing regular appropriations bills before addressing the emergency foreign aid package, particularly due to delicate political calculations in the House. Despite progress on most appropriations bills, disagreements persist over the Homeland Security Appropriations Bill, primarily related to immigration and border security policies. Some lawmakers are considering separating the Homeland Security Bill from others to facilitate progress. Official report warns Germany's military is aging and shrinking. Germany's armed forces are facing significant challenges with personnel shortages and aging ranks, as highlighted in a critical report presented to Parliament by Eva Hagel, Germany's Commissioner for the Armed Forces. Despite Chancellor Olaf Scholz's announcement of major investments in defense in 2022, the military continues to struggle with equipment shortages and infrastructure problems. Hoggle's annual report for 2023 reveals large personnel vacancies in several military units and equipment shortages ranging from heavy equipment to spare parts. The deficiencies have worsened as Germany supplied weapons from its stocks to Ukraine. Although Scholz announced a €100 billion Euro special fund to re-equip the military after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the report suggests that actual changes have been slow to materialize. Some military facilities are in poor condition, with barracks featuring dilapidated rooms, moldy showers, and clogged toilets. Hoggle's role as commissioner is to assist Parliament in its oversight duties regarding the military and advocate for soldiers' rights. Austria expels two Russian diplomats suspected of spy activity. 
Austria's foreign ministry has expelled two Russian diplomats for engaging in activities incompatible with their diplomatic status, declaring them persona non grata with a deadline to leave the country by March 19. The decision follows a report from the Die Presse newspaper. Despite Austria's neutral stance and its hosting of several United Nations organizations, it has been slower to expel Russian diplomats and unwind economic ties with Moscow compared to other EU members since the invasion of Ukraine. Austria's reliance on Russian natural gas imports, notably from Gazprom, and the presence of Raiffeisen Bank International AG as the largest foreign-owned lender in Russia, have contributed to this hesitancy. With parliamentary elections approaching in the fall, relations with Russia have become a contentious issue, especially with the far-right Freedom Party, which advocates for lifting sanctions on Moscow, leading in public opinion polls. Recent reports, including one from the Falter newspaper, have identified several Russian embassy staff in Austria as secret service agents. The Austrian foreign ministry clarified that the expulsions were not related to these media reports. Russia has condemned the move and announced retaliatory measures. West Point Military Academy drops duty, honor, country from mission statement. The U.S. Military Academy at West Point has decided to remove the duty, honor, country motto from its mission statement, replacing it with Army values. In a letter to cadets and supporters, Superintendent Lieutenant General Steve Gilland explained that the decision came after a thorough assessment of the institution's vision, mission, and strategy. The new mission statement emphasizes building, educating, training, and inspiring the Corps of Cadets to become commissioned leaders committed to Army values and lifelong service to the Army and nation. Gilland assured that duty, honor, country would always remain the school's motto. Defining its culture and history. The change was approved by Secretary of the Army Christine Wormuth and Army Chief of Staff Randy George. Critics view the move as part of the military's embrace of woke policies. Despite the removal from the mission statement, Gilland emphasized that the principles of duty, honor, and country are integral to the Academy's ethos. He noted that West Point has updated its mission statement nine times in the past century, reflecting evolving priorities and objectives. Top U.S. military chief visits munitions plants with lawmakers to press the need to arm Ukraine. Joint Chiefs Chairman General C.Q. Brown is visiting U.S. weapon factories in Oklahoma and Arkansas to highlight the importance of the $95 billion aid package for Ukraine, framing it as vital for both Ukraine's survival and the U.S. economy. Brown is touring Lockheed Martin's Camden, Arkansas, plant and the McAllister Army Ammunition Plant in Oklahoma, accompanied by lawmakers representing those factory workforces. The trip aims to address concerns over sending billions of dollars overseas amidst domestic needs. Brown emphasizes the need to replenish U.S. military stockpiles sent to Ukraine during its conflict with Russia and how increased production supports local economies. The factories produce weapons crucial for Ukraine's defense, such as the high-mobility artillery rocket system and army tactical missile systems. The aid bill is facing opposition from some lawmakers, including those on the trip, who have either voted against it or expressed opposition. The stalled bill is now a point of contention in the House, with hardline Republicans, including Rep. Josh Brachin, opposing it. Exclusive Trump launched CIA covert influence operation against China. In a covert operation authorized by former President Donald Trump in 2019, the CIA launched a campaign targeting Chinese social media with the aim of influencing public opinion against the Chinese government. The operation involved operatives creating false internet identities to spread negative narratives about the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, and leaking disparaging intelligence to overseas news outlets. The campaign focused on promoting allegations of corruption within the CCP and criticizing initiatives like the Belt and Road Initiative. Despite declining to provide specific details, former U.S. officials assert that the narratives were based on factual information. The goal was to create paranoia among Chinese leaders and force the government to allocate resources to counter the perceived threats. The existence and impact of the operation remain unclear, and it is uncertain if the Biden administration has continued it. The operation reflects a tougher stance toward China under the Trump administration and evokes Cold War-era methods of political warfare. However, it also carries risks of escalating tensions and undermining U.S. credibility, potentially reinforcing Chinese accusations of Western subversion. Trump floats billionaire Paulson as potential Treasury chief, Bloomberg reports. 
Former President Donald Trump has reportedly discussed the possibility of appointing billionaire hedge fund manager John Paulson as his Treasury Secretary if he wins the 2024 presidential election. The discussions, described as informal and preliminary, also involved other potential candidates such as former U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer, Susquehanna International Group founder Jeff Yass, and Key Square Group founder Scott Besant. However, no decisions have been made regarding Trump's cabinet for a potential second administration. Trump's spokesperson emphasized that there have been no formal discussions about cabinet appointments. Paulson, the founder of Paulson Co., and the other potential candidates mentioned in the discussions have not commented on the matter. Former GOP congressman exits House race to join Trump campaign. Former U.S. Representative Mark Walker has decided to end his congressional comeback bid in North Carolina's 6th congressional district and join Donald Trump's presidential campaign as the director of outreach for faith and minority communities. Walker's decision avoids a potential competitive House primary runoff against Addison McDowell, who had the support of Trump and several other losing candidates in the Republican primary. As the top two vote-getters in the primary, McDowell and Walker were set to advance to a runoff, but Walker chose not to file for one. Trump announced Walker's new position on his campaign, expressing his enthusiasm for working together again. Walker, who previously served in the House from 2015 to 2021, had also made unsuccessful runs for Senate and Governor in recent years. With no Democrat running in the 6th district race, McDowell, a former congressional aide to Rep. Ted Budd, is expected to win the general election and enter Congress next year. Trump promises to the free January 6 rioters on first day back in White House if re-elected. Former President Donald Trump has vowed that one of his first acts if elected to a second term would be to free individuals convicted for their involvement in the January 6 attack on the U.S. Capitol, whom he claims are wrongfully imprisoned. Trump made this promise on his social media platform, highlighting his repeated defense of those charged and convicted for their actions on January 6, 2021. While Trump didn't specify the number of individuals he would pardon, he previously expressed inclination to pardon many of them, citing that some got out of control. The Department of Justice revealed that nearly 1. 400 people have been arrested and charged in connection with January 6, with almost 800 pleading guilty. Among the defendants, 127 are accused of using a deadly weapon or causing serious bodily injury to an officer. Nearly 500 defendants have received prison sentences, with most set to be released by January 2025, coinciding with Trump's potential return to the White House if re-elected. Trump's campaign has played the Star-Spangled Banner by the J6 Prison Choir before his recent events, emphasizing his support for January 6 defendants. The DOJ continues to arrest additional defendants linked to the Capitol violence. Some individuals have received significant sentences, including former Proud Boys leader Enrique Tarrio and Oath Keepers leader Stuart Rhodes. The Biden campaign criticized Trump's stance, accusing him of encouraging political violence to maintain power, asserting that the American people reject such actions and will protect democracy in the upcoming election. More than 25 state attorneys general urged Senate to pass Lake and Riley Act. 26 attorneys general from across the U.S. have urged Senate leadership to pass H.R. 7511, known as the Lake and Riley Act, which would detain illegal immigrants for certain criminal offenses until deportation. Led by attorneys general from South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, the letter addressed to Senate leaders highlighted President Biden's handling of immigration issues and emphasized the need for the bill's immediate attention. The letter referenced the tragic murder of Lake and Riley, a college nursing student, allegedly killed by Jose Ibarra, an illegal immigrant with prior criminal charges. The bill passed in the House last week. Requiring federal immigration authorities to detain illegal immigrants charged with local theft or burglary, in response to Riley's murder. Ibarra, the accused, had previous run-ins with the law in New York and Georgia. The bill's author, Rep. Mike Collins, urged the Senate to take up the legislation promptly. The Senate version of the bill was introduced by two Republican senators as a companion to H.R. 7511. GOP Senator Grill's TikTok CEO on how Chinese migrants learn to cross border, step by step instructions. Republican Senator Eric Schmidt of Missouri has called on TikTok and its Chinese based owner, ByteDance, to provide answers regarding videos on their platforms allegedly showing users how to cross the U.S. southern border, as the number of Chinese nationals crossing the border increases. 
Schmidt expressed concern about reports indicating that Chinese nationals are using TikTok and its Chinese counterpart to illegally cross the border, citing step-by-step -step instructions and detailed directions provided on the platform. He highlighted the potential national security implications of ByteDance's contribution to the border crisis and emphasized the surge in the number of Chinese nationals crossing the border since fiscal year 2021. Schmidt requested information from TikTok and ByteDance regarding their awareness of videos promoting illegal immigration, their efforts to address the issue, and any communications with Chinese government officials about illegal crossings. He accused TikTok of empowering human smugglers and cartels and called for transparency regarding the platform's communications with the Chinese Communist Party. TikTok stated that it strictly prohibits human smuggling and removes such content from its platform, claiming to proactively remove 93% of human trafficking content. The letter comes as the House approved a bill requiring ByteDance to divest from TikTok within 165 days if signed into law. Stefanik rips Obama AG Loretta Lynch over lobbying gig for Chinese military company. House GOP Conference Chair Elise Stefanik criticized former Attorney General Loretta Lynch for reportedly lobbying the Pentagon on behalf of SCDJI Technology Company, a Chinese company known for making military technology. Stefanik described it as disgraceful that Lynch, a former official under President Barack Obama, would advocate for a Chinese military company identified by the Department of Defense. Lynch, now a partner at law firm Paul Weiss, reportedly wrote a letter to the Pentagon asking for DJI to be removed from the DOD's list of Chinese military companies. The report raised concerns about potential conflicts of interest. As Lynch's advocacy could benefit a Chinese government-linked company. DJI has faced scrutiny over its alleged support for surveillance and repression efforts against Uyghurs, leading to investment restrictions imposed by the U.S. Treasury in December 2021. Stefanik, along with House China Select Committee Chair Mike Gallagher, is leading a bill called the Countering CCP Drones Act, aimed at further restricting DJI's activity in the U.S. India approves full development of fifth-generation fighter. India's Cabinet Committee on Security has approved the continuation of the development of the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA, the country's indigenous fifth-generation fighter jet. The project, led by the Aeronautical Development Agency in Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, has been granted 150 trillion rupees, approximately $1.8 billion, for full-scale design and development, flight testing, and certification. Five prototypes of the twin-engine AMCA are expected, with the first flight anticipated before the end of 2028. The Indian Air Force aims to deploy seven squadrons of these stealthy fighters, with series production potentially beginning in 2035. However, experts suggest that final operational clearance may not be achieved until 2040 or later. The AMC MK-1 will be equipped with General Electric F414 engines, while the MK-2 variant will feature larger engines for supersonic cruising capability, developed in collaboration with a foreign partner. The AMCA program, initiated in 2008, aims to address India's shortage of advanced fighter aircraft amid increasing regional security challenges. Canadian law endorsed by Trudeau government could imprison people for life for speech crimes. The Online Harms Act, also known as Bill C-63, introduced in Canada, has sparked criticism for its perceived government overreach. Under the proposed law, judges could potentially impose life imprisonment for advocating genocide, and provincial judges could order house arrest and fines if there are reasonable grounds to believe an offense will be committed, a provision likened to the film, The Minority Report, by some critics. Margaret Atwood, author of The Handmaid's Tale, labeled the bill as Orwellian and expressed concerns about its potential for abuse. Conservative author Stephen Moore described it as one of the most shocking and illiberal pieces of legislation introduced in decades. The bill aims to increase the maximum penalties for advocating genocide and promoting hatred. Justice Minister Arif Virani, who introduced the bill, cited concerns about internet safety for children and emphasized the need for regulation similar to safety standards for toys. Critics argue that the bill represents an encroachment on free speech and raises concerns about government intrusion into online expression. Miley Inacha's win as Argentina swaps $50 billion of debt. Argentina has successfully exchanged approximately 77% of its peso debt due this year for longer-dated notes, marking the largest domestic debt rollover in the country's history. President Javier Milei's administration orchestrated the swap as part of efforts to stabilize the economy and bolster public finances. 
the government exchanged 42.6 trillion pesos, $50.4 billion, of local bonds maturing in 2024 for securities due from next year through 2028. Following the announcement, Argentina's sovereign bonds experienced gains, with dollar notes due between 2029 and 2046 rising in value. Extending the maturities on the bonds will reduce the need for the government to print pesos to cover debt payments. The results were in line with expectations and garnered full support from the public sector, while private sector participation was marginal. The central bank's decision not to offer put options on the new peso bonds discouraged private banks from participating. Despite facing resistance to his austerity plan from labor groups and provincial governors, Miley I's administration is pushing ahead with efforts to manage the country's finances. Somali pirates hijack Bangladeshi cargo ship, take more than 20 hostage. Somali pirates hijacked the Bangladeshi cargo ship MV Abdullah while it was en route to the United Arab Emirates port of Al Hamriya. The ship, carrying 58 tons of coal from Mozambique, was seized along with its 23 crew members. The crew reported being attacked by pirates using an Iranian fishing boat. The pirates, armed with guns, threatened the crew and intended to take them to their camp. SR Shipping Lines, the owner of the vessel, received a message from the captain confirming the hijacking but stating that the crew was safe. Mehrul Karim, CEO of SR Shipping, commented that they were awaiting further communication from the pirates. The incident occurred amidst warnings from the International Maritime Organization about increased attacks by Houthi rebels in the region, potentially emboldening Somali pirates. This hijacking coincided with the announcement of sanctions by the Biden administration against a network accused of laundering money for the Al-Shabaab terrorist organization. Somali piracy has been a recurring issue in the region, with notable incidents in the past, including hijackings in 2017 and 2019.